I'm Angela Sharp and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had an amazing weekend. This is the first weekend since before the whole world shut down that I've had like a high vibe, happy weekend. And I really hope that can continue on into this week and hopefully the rest of the week will also go well. So I hope your week is starting off on the right foot as well. You know, something that's pretty cool is that Will Smith has been celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and he's sharing the love. This week, he's giving fans the opportunity to book a one-night stay in the master wing of the iconic mansion through Airbnb. I think this is so much fun, you guys. Now, this is only for fans who live in the Los Angeles County area, but it's still pretty cool. So guests lucky enough to book the night will have access to the master wing of the home, as well as the poolside lounge area, a dining room, and access to Will's wardrobe. Okay, this is so much fun. What else is there? Um, it's also decorated with graffiti art. It has family portraits. And DJ Jazzy Jeff will be there to greet you with a virtual welcome. I just think that is so much fun. I love when all these Airbnbs pop up that are kind of themed after something else. And I think this fits perfectly with it being the 30th anniversary. I just wish I lived in the area of town that we could go check it out. Because how much fun would that be? Later on in the show, I'm gonna have Patrick Murphy. He's the author of the book, Candy Men. It's about the iconic candy store in downtown St. Louis. You're gonna have to check that out, but I have a ton of other stuff coming up with you on the show. We've got things about soccer and things about the circus. You know what? Let's just get started on today's Daily Mix. Congratulations are in order for Joe Buck. He is going to be going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's the winner of the Pete Rozelle Award, and I think this is so great. So he actually will be joining his dad there. They'll be the first father-son in the NFL Hall of Fame, which is so amazing. You know, Joe Buck is always around St. Louis, and I feel like everybody feels like they know him. I'm one of those people who feels like I know him. Although I, you know, don't go hang out with him or anything. I saw him all the time when I worked for the Blues. And uh, there was one day that he called me on the phone to try to help me with my career. Like, how nice of a man, like, barely knew me, called me on the phone to help me out. And he's actually a big reason why I left the Blues to go to the Tampa Bay Rays, because he was, you know, helping me and, and giving me some advice. I just think he's such a nice guy. And I know he gets a lot of heat on the internet, people saying, you know, that he's favoring one team or the other, but I don't think he does at all. So this is just very cool. He received the news at halftime of the Cleveland Browns and Cincinnati Bengals game. Check this out. Troy and Joe, I want to thank you for all you do for the game. Joe, I know your dad would be very proud that you're following in his footsteps because tonight we're announcing that you are the recipient of this year's Pete Rozelle Award for 2020, making the Bucks the first father and son to ever do so. Congratulations, Joe. Welcome to Canton. Congratulations. <laughs> we're we're going to get you a gold jacket. Congratulations. Oh well deserved. God, I, I don't even know what to say. It's like, oh. I feel like, what? That's unbelievable. And, and my God, thank you. I, I mean, that's just so much fun, right? We've got a lot of other cool sports things going on. Earlier this month, the St. Louis City SC opened up season ticket deposits. And within the first 15 minutes, 30,000 seats have been reserved. That was in the first 24 hours, they hit 50,000 seats. Now, if you think that sounds like a lot, you're right. St. Louis soccer fans shattered previous best turnout for season ticket deposits in the history of Major League Soccer. I mean, we really want our soccer, don't we? We also had a record breaking numbers for merchandise sales because everybody knows St. Louis loves to represent their sports teams. Now, if you weren't among the first 50,000 fans, you can still place your season ticket deposits and become a city founder leading up to seat selections ahead of the 2023 inaugural season. This is so amazing, you guys. 2023 is when the season starts. 
already breaking records to get those seats right now. Now, if you want to get in on all the fun, just visit stlcitysc.com. Fall is officially here. I'm pretty bummed out about it, you guys. When the weather turned cold, I got sad. I love summer, hot summer weather. I hate fall because fall means winter's around the corner. But if you love fall, it's here and you're excited, all right? So starting this weekend, you can enjoy autumn with the animals at the St. Louis Zoo. So that'll take your mind off the fact that the weather's getting colder. You can take advantage of the cooler weather and enjoy a festive fall day at the zoo with a specialty menu items for you, apple themed enrichment for the animals and digital activities and crafts for the kids. Autumn's with the animals on Saturdays and Sundays from nine to five through October 11th. To learn more and reserve your free tickets, visit stlzoo.org. And you know, since we're talking about fall, it's not too early to talk about Halloween, right? You know, there's been some talk that Halloween might be canceled here in St. Louis. I'm against this. I don't know if my brother's going to let me, but I really want to take my niece and nephew out trick-or-treating again like I've done the last couple years. So let's just let the kids have fun. Please, please let's let the kids have fun. But if you're looking for something safe to do with the kids, Union Station has created a new event full of family fun this season, all while keeping guest safety in mind. The Union Station Halloween experience features haunted train tours, a not so scary maze, a big barnyard, a fall festival market, and so much more. The wheel will be lighted up in Halloween colors throughout the event, and the aquarium's divers will join in the fun, creating jack-o'-lantern treats for the residents of Shark Cannon with underwater pumpkin carving. Underwater pumpkin carving, how amazing is that? The Halloween experience rolls into Union Station October 9th through the 31st. Tickets can be purchased on site or in advance at stlouisunionstation.com. They say it's a show unlike any they've ever done before, for a time unlike any we've had been in. This October, Circus Harmony will host an online event straight from the individual homes of their student and alumni performers. It's through the lens of the pandemic. The show was originally planned for this August with a focus on youth mental health problems. Since then, with the growing protests focused on racism and police brutality and the upcoming presidential election, they have broadened the show to capture this moment in history. The balancing act, Walking the Pandemic Tightrope, will feature circus acts, original music, and a narrative that looks at students' perspectives on current events and so much more. The show will be broadcast online on Saturday, October 10th at 7 p.m. It is free, however, you do need to register. You can do that at circusharmony.org slash balancing act. You know, I recently, not recently, but about last year, went to Circus Harmony and they kind of showed me what to do in one of those giant, I don't remember what they even called it, those giant rings where you get in there and kind of try to balance. And it, I mean, it's a ton of fun to watch. It's amazing to try to learn. It's kind of hard, but it's awesome. But then seeing other performers do it just so easily kind of makes you feel like, huh, maybe I could do that if I really practiced. Circus Harmony has received many awards for their amazing work. And most recently, they were honored with Focus St. Louis What's Right with the Region Award for fostering creativity for social change. Take a look at this. Circus Harmony is St. Louis's only social circus school. That means we use the teaching and performing of circus arts to motivate social change. And we do it by building character in individuals and building bridges between communities. I love what I do because I get to be like Peter Pan. And I sprinkle the magic circus dust on young people and if they think the right thoughts, they fly. And then I get to see them defying gravity and soaring with confidence and going all over the world and accomplishing amazing things with each other. And what I really love is the ones who have gone out and are at Circus College or Cirque du Soleil, when they come back to visit, they always come to Circus Harmony at City Museum and they share something with the next generation. And that's just really heartwarming to see. Joining me now is Patrick Murphy. He wrote the book Candyman. He's an author here in St. Louis. Patrick, thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. All right, we have to kind of, let's back up for everybody. 
When did you start writing and when did you know that this was something you wanted to do? Well, I always wrote for television. I worked at a television station for a long time. And, uh, but I got this idea that it would be fun to write the story of the history of the Switzer Licorice Company. And I guess if you can write one thing, you can write another thing. And I just sat down and I wrote it. And uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. But writing for TV is really different from writing for, for like a real book with a cover on it. Because as you know, you know, for TV and electronic media, you try not to let the words get in the way. It's all about the pictures, right? right. But in publishing, the words are very important, they tell me. Well, I was going to say, in, in TV, it's usually, you know, a story here, a story there that might be up to two minutes. But this is a this is a full book. So to me, that's yeah. drastically different. That occasionally crossed my mind as, as I was writing it. It's like, oh, my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but it's really fun. It's a um, and it is, it is a subject that's kind of close to my heart. It's a story of Switzer Licorice Company and my father, my grandfather, and my great grandfather who came over from Ireland uh, worked at the company. In fact, the old Irish guy actually started the company in the 1880s with Fred Switzer. And so uh, fun. So, like every man in my family from the time I was born worked at Switzer Licorice, which is interesting because it's a famous factory. It's right, it was till it blew down in 2006, right there on the East Bridge with that big candy sign on the side of the wall. So, if you saw a picture of like St. Louis and the river, you probably, you know, saw Switzer Licorice peeking out there from behind. And then for many years, the entire riverfront smelled like like licorice. My dad smelled like licorice. He told me his dad smelled like rick licorice. And since the book's come out, a lot of people have told me when I say, oh yeah, I wrote a book on Switch's licorice. They go, the smell, ah, the smell. Now see, I didn't even realize licorice had a smell. Oh yeah, it's like, um, sort of like anise, or it's almost kind of a sweet medicinal kind of smell. It's really powerful. You either love it or you hate it. Yeah. It's one or the other. Well, it's I love that this was important to you because you had so many family members who worked there at the time. Yeah. And that's kind of really what got you started. But for people that are just now listening who maybe are more like me and, and don't know much about this, yeah. why would this book be interesting to them? Well, it's it's interesting, I think, on a, on a few levels. For one, it's a great it's a great immigrant story, kind of an American dream story. Like my great grandfather came over because the English were going to hang him. Like in 1870, he was a political refugee, and all he knew was how to make candy. So he came to America with like nothing, but he knew how to make candy. Uh, the Switzer family grew up in Kerry Patch, which is like this incredibly poor Irish slum just north of downtown. And and so it's like all. And by the way, Switzer is an Irish name. It sounds German, and, and, but it's Irish, and which confuses things a little bit. So it's these two Irish-American families struggling, trying to achieve the American dream, like on a foundation of candy, of, of all things. And then the story weaves uh, among a lot of uh, historical events in St. Louis, like the Great Depression. Depression is are great for candy. Candy is about the only business in St. Louis that did great during the Depression. Because it only costs a penny and you know people eat candy when they feel good and they eat candy when they feel bad and so it, it got through the depression and then it actually became switzer licorice because they used to make caramels and all kinds of chocolates uh in world war ii when there was a sugar ration so they couldn't make sugary candy so they made licorice and after that um it's just always been a, a, a licorice company so it's kind of an american Greek dream story it's an immigrant story it's a good Irish Catholic story. Everybody likes Irish Catholics, you know, and so and everybody loves uh, and everybody loves candy so much. And so everybody loves to, candy. What did you candy. have to do in order to research this book? Well, part of the research was was done before I started it because um, I'd heard all these family stories growing up. I mean, every family story was about the factory in one way or another. But when I was a kid, before it was Cleves Landing, it was like just a warehouse and factory district. And I used to hang out there as a kid a lot and hang out down at, 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 at the factory. So I had a lot of family stories. And then I started, and then I interviewed a lot of the Switzers, who, because the families that are married at one point were kind of distant cousins. And their stories lined up with my stories, even after a century, which is kind of interesting. 
Then there's Ancestry.com. And then I discovered something called Newspaper.com, where, where you can type in any newspaper, any year, any subject. And I went all the way back to the 1840s in Dublin and found newspaper articles and things. And you get the newspaper right there on your computer. Well, that's actually very, very interesting. I love it's, that. It's, it, it is really fun. And then just, again, all of these old family stories and, uh, you know, that were just kind of passed down. Growing up, I actually felt that I knew people who had died before I was born just because I'd heard so many stories about them. And what's interesting is in, in the 1960s, the company was bought out by a corporation. It was a family company, and then it was a, and it was bought out by a corporation. Then it was sold to another corporation and another corporation. And then Hershey's, at one point in the 1990s, just killed it. So the the, 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 the brand is gone. There is no Switzer's licorice. And then in 2006, the building blows down. So you would think, that's that. That's the end of the story. But what happened is the grandson of the original founder, Fred Switzer, who founded the company with my great-grandfather, Joe Murphy, he resurrected the company. So you can get Switzer's licorice out there now in stores. Oh, well, no, see, that's so great. I love so that. There's like a resurrection that. angle to all of this. Yeah. That is amazing. Now, if somebody's listening and they really want to know how they can get a hold of this book, how can they contact you? How can they find out more information? Well, it's going to be in fine bookstores everywhere, and you can get it in all the usual places. But, you know, if you want to get it without much hassle and really fast and really simple, just go to the website. Uh, www.candymenthebook, one word, candymenthebook.com. We'll get one off to you this afternoon. <laughs> I love that so Lots much. Lots of pictures, 90, 95 uh, photographs, old historic stuff, family photos, old pictures of St. Louis you've probably never seen before. Well, yeah, so the, even if you're a, more of a history buff and not so much into the candy, it might yeah. be really interesting for you to take a look at. So it's got candy, it's got history, it's got great. What is there not to love? You got you to gotta check them out. So go to candymenthebook.com yes. if you're interested in checking out Patrick's book. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Great. And after you guys go and check out Patrick's book, Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can drop us a line at the Daily Mix at stltv.net. We want to hear from you. That's going to do it for the Daily Mix, but keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis. See you next time.